Welcome to another Quiet PC video with myself, Andy Ford. Now in this video, I'll be answering quite a common question we receive via email, and that's how to power PC fans from the mains without a PC. There's only one place to be for a new PC. QuietPC.com there are many reasons that you might want to use PC fans around the house and a common one I've been given many times over the years is to cool an AV cabinet or indeed any enclosed space filled with warm electrical gear. In this video I'll be using standard 3 pin fans as there is no benefit at all to using PWM fans. Now while we can power fans we can't regulate their speed according to temperature so just be aware of that limitation. The fans will be on all the time but running at slow speed there should be little noise with the correct choice of fan. The main thing to remember here is to use large fans, say around 120mm, but also use quality fans such as the Notchua NF S12A FLX. These are what I would currently recommend as they offer a lot of airflow at slower, quieter speeds. And I'll leave a link for this fan in the video description below. So generally speaking, if you're trying to cool a cabinet, I would recommend a push-pull configuration with one fan taking in cooler air and another fan on the opposite side venting the warm air. But that's about as much help as I can offer on that subject, as each enclosure will be different and I'm certainly no airflow optimization expert. Okay, now let's take a look at what we need. The first thing we need is a power source and I'm using this simple 12 volt mains power adapter, which can easily be found both online and usually in some larger supermarkets. Unless you only want to run the fans at full speed, I would recommend that you choose one like this that has a switch letting you choose voltages between 3 and 12 volts. Most fans will start at 7.5 volts, and some at 5 volts, but if you want to run your fans on one of these lower settings, do check once it's wired up that the fan can actually start spinning before installing the fan. You'll also need a cable such as this Molex to 3-pin fan adapter, although any cable will do, just so long as it has a female 3-pin connector on the end such as this. Many of you will want to run more than one fan, so how do you know how many fans are safe to connect to the adapter? Right, here's the technical bit. The power adapter I'm using supplies 500 milliamps or half an amp. The popular Notchua NF S12A FLX fan I recommended earlier is rated at 0.12 amps or 120 milliamps. So four of these fans in total would amount to 480 milliamps, which is just under the 500 milliamps rating of this power supply. This is important because if you add too many fans, they will try to draw more current than the 500 milliamps available, and this could damage the adapter. Other adapters are available with more current to power more fans, but I think that four fans is probably the most many of you will actually use. So with the technical bit over, the next question is how do we connect the fans to the adapter? Well, you'll need a Molex to 3-pin fan adapter or something similar, as we will need to splice the female connector onto the mains adapter so that we can connect a fan. Cables such as these can be easily found on the internet for a few pounds. The first thing we need to do is to carefully cut the ends off both the extension cable and the power adapter, as we will need to splice these together. I would then remove around 20mm of the insulation from around the end of each wire prior to splicing them together. Now we have a dilemma here as to which way around the wires go. The red wire on the 3 pin connector will be 12 volt positive and the black wire negative but the chances are the wires on the adapter will both be black. So just quickly twist the wires together and test to see if the fan spins when connected at 12 volts. If it doesn't spin straight away or it just twitches then just reverse the wires and try again. Be careful not to let the wires touch while you are testing the fan. Once you are happy the fan is working correctly, you can then twist the wires more securely into a braid to help keep them connected before finally covering the wires in insulation tape. Alternatively, you can apply a bit of solder to the wires to make a really secure join and use heat shrink wire wraps to give a bit more professional look. For added flexibility, one final modification you can make will be to make it compatible with 4-pin PWM fans. To do this, carefully cut off one edge of the fan connector with a Stanley knife like this. And that will help you to connect 4-pin PWM fans if required, but as mentioned previously, they will not adjust speed automatically depending on temperature. 
PWM fans will always run at a fixed speed when powered like this. And here's the final result. All four fans connected with a four-way fan splitter all powered from the mains. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please leave a thumbs up in the video description below. Thank you for watching, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.